Radio Network, broadcasting from the Lucas Oil Studios, driven by General Tire. It's Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio redefined with Kenny Sargent, Crash Gladys, and Statman. Here's the Freaks. You know, Statman may not be concerned about this, but I am that I'm going to be playing injured for the next two hours here in the Freak Nation. What? Yep. What? What? what it's first on? world problems, Crash. I just spent eight days on the beach, and I have <laughs> burnt lips. You need a vacation from your vacation. Yeah, you oh typically my gosh, do. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, especially when you don't get in until two a.m. because of. Airplane problems, which I know everybody's going through this summer if you're flying. What do people care about that? We, okay, they do. Oh, they care about your burnt lips more yes. than our airplane problems. Hell yes, they do. <laughs> okay. Ah. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Just wanted right. to know where the priority is. So, were. Stad, I don't need any freaking side text throughout the show going, Kenny, what's wrong with your lip? Well, I got a little crispy out there. I put some Neosp- put Neosporin on my lips this morning. <laughs> So wait a minute. Mm-hmm. When did you realize you burned them? How many days has this been going on and we just didn't know? Uh, about four or five days ago. <laughs> yeah, man. So they arguably should be feeling fine right now, whereas a few days ago, pain. Yeah. NASCAR Cup winner Tyler Reddick, your Road America winner, be joining this hour. No pain. Joe Shimoda. Supercross, motocross badass here. But yeah, my, with my lips, it's tough. Statman's going to say, Kenny, why aren't you smiling more? I just, my smile it cracks open, brother. Hey, you know, I mean, that's uh, Beyonce talked about that. It breaks my soul, you know? I mean, that, that's, there it is. She had chap lips? She had chap something. <laughs> she been Dang, two drum rolls this early in the show. I see where no. this thing's going. No. Uh. Yeah. When it's, you put that out as the lead image on your release, <laughs> you can't expect anything. You know? Hey. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. That is a very good point, Stat, man. Yeah, man. Fun show tonight. Tyler Reddick. We've been chasing this guy. Well, we've been chasing him because of Beat the Freaks, where mm-hmm. we all have had him at one time or another as one of our drivers to Beat the Freaks. And the dude comes so close to winning and finally wins at Road America. He'll be here in the Freak Nation. And speaking of winners, we'll just keep moving on through the hour. Mm-hmm. Joe Schmoda. Mm-hmm. Winner from Red Bud, Lucas Oil Motocross. Someone last weekend. finally unseated those Lawrence brothers. Hmm. Justin Ashley. We'll be checking oh. in from... Yeah. Speaking of winners again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. His sister's wedding weekend. He'll be here in the Freak Nation. NHRA top fueler. Two-time winner this year, right? Yes. Most recently on Father's Day. It's right. his sister's wedding, but Mama put the foot down and said, this is what's going to work, and this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. And if it's a race weekend, oh, well, you're going to the wedding. Thank well. goodness it wasn't a, wasn't a race weekend. Isn't that greatness? <laughs> Yee. Mom rules, man. Mom rules. You follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You can't escape the Freak Nation. Uh, we are past our tw- – when do we put 23 years on our Speed Freaks logo? We had 20 – it feels like we had 22 on it for the last <laughs> two years. When do we put 23 January. years? January. Because we don't turn 23 till next June. So right. January. That's when you did the 22. You started it in January. Yeah. So, yeah. But we could technically – Take off the twenty two. No, no, we're we're in the. I'm so confused. Yeah, well, Stabman is a huge, huge Michael Jordan fan. I'm sure he's waiting for me to <laughs> turn that well, number to twenty three. I was going to bring it up, but you were on the beach last weekend, so I just let you enjoy the beach. Yep. All right. Instead of worrying about changing twenty two to twenty three. As long as we don't go to forty five like Jordan was, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. That's like the, the amount of numbers that he changed. He changed, or well, actually, uh, LeBron James, mm-hmm. Kobe too, Kobe, Kobe. Mm-hmm. a couple of times. Yeah. You know that doesn't happen in football. You know, em- Emmett Smith was twenty two. 
Dan you know, Brown was 32. Right. You don't change the numbers of, of football greatness. That's true. Brady never changed going to Tampa Bay. Peyton didn't change going to Tampa No. Yeah. All right. Don't do that. Uh, coming up, you got Crash Gladys, Pitt News and Notes. And again, your Road America NASCAR Cup winner, Tyler Reddick, will be here in the Freak Nation. Going to resume this new affiliate. We'll get right back with it with Crash Gladys, Pitt News and Notes, brought to you by good friends at General Tire Freak Nation. Speed Freaks, we promise to suck less. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined the Freaks. Bringing in another round of the affiliate Freak Nation, Speed Freaks on a Sunday night. Thank you guys for hanging out. Stat man, Crash Gladys, Kenny Sargent. Tyler Reddick, Road America Cup winner, will be joining us in about six or seven minutes. But first, Crash Gladys Pit News and Notes brought to you by good friends at General Tire. It's hot out there. A lot of folks on the road this summer. Make sure you got yourself a new set of General Tires on that bad boy. To find out the size, the tire for your ride, do what smart freaks do and go to GeneralTire.com. It's GeneralTire.com. It's GeneralTire.com. Crasher? So, Max Verstappen is still leading the Formula One points. But his lead was slightly reduced after Charles Leclerc took the win at the Austrian Grand Prix earlier today. And speaking of F1, IndyCar driver Colton Herta will take his first official seat in a McLaren machine tomorrow and Tuesday in Portimao. I'm not sure about you all. I'm just not ready for Colton to leave the IndyCar series just yet. But obviously props to him whenever he eventually does go. Now, NASCAR gave us an excellent weekend, both at Mid-Ohio and down south in Atlanta. First, the trucks in Mid-Ohio, Parker Kligerman. Yeah, that TV guy. He held off Zane Smith on the inaugural road course race to win by just 0.119 seconds. The Xfinity Series then delivered a finish just as exciting when Georgia native Austin Hill beat Josh Berry to the stripe by only 0.111 seconds. And how about those hometown drivers all weekend? On Sunday, it was Dawsonville's Chase Elliott, his turn. Yep, the siren rang. Chase took home the checkers in a thrilling race with these new cup cars. It was Arguably, in my opinion, the best cup race yet of the year. Peaches in victory lane for everyone. And something we need to keep our eye on, Ross Chastain. He's pretty much driving himself away from more and more friendships on the track. Just stay tuned to that. The SRX series was at the Nashville Fairgrounds, and it was a new-ish face in victory lane. Bobby Labonte taking the win over a hard-charging Marco Andretti. Jet Lawrence was back on top in the 250 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Series, while Eli Tomac commanded his third win in a row on the four, in the 450s on the Sand and Southwick. Monza played host to the six hours race with the Le Mans hypercars. Andre Negrau, Matthew Volksberry, and Nicolas Lapierre with the win, and still atop their point standings. For more information all weekend on racing, check out racer.com and, of course, speedsport.com. One of the main reasons for poor vehicle performance is a dirty fuel system. It can cause decreased fuel economy and actually do harm to your engine over time. By adding Lucas Fuel Treatment to your vehicle, it cleans and lubricates the entire fuel system. Pump, carburetors, fuel injectors, and valves as you drive. It also improves your vehicle's performance. It's a non-solvent product designed to protect both gasoline and diesel engines. Lucas Fuel Treatment. It works. General Tire was born more than 100 years ago, right here in America. We've spent the last century tackling every kind of road this country has to offer, and especially the places without roads. So you know that with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Soul, it works. I run Lucas Oil. It doesn't matter if you're on the water, driving to work, or competing in a sold out stadium. Lucas Oil products will help you get the most out of your vehicle. Monster Jam has run Lucas Oil in and on our trucks for over 10 years. We wouldn't run anything else. Lucas Oil, the official oil of Monster Jam. 
IndyCar, WWT Raceway, Saturday, August 20th, the Bomberito Automotive Group 500, icons, legends, and rising stars, drama at 200 miles per hour, it's not a reality show, it's real life, real fast, the iconic teams, McLaren, Andretti, Voigt, Rahal, Penske, Ganassi, legendary drivers, Johnson, Canon, Castro Nevis, New Garden, IndyCar, only at WWT Raceway. A hey, Freak Nation, did you hear? With the addition of MAV TV Plus to the MAV TV Motorsports Network, they've got their full live event broadcast schedule, a total of 226 live race broadcasts featuring the Arca Menard Series, the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, Pro Pulling League, American Sprint Car Series, Pro Motocross, and the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. MAV TV, the only television network dedicated to motorsports. Go to MAVTV.com to get your motorsports fixed 24-7, 365. <laughs> Hey, Freak Nation, whether you're looking for a tire that balances high-performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in off-road situations, or a summer performance tire designed with the driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, supporting the Freak Nation for two decades. You're listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. General Tire Freak Nation, been with us for over 22 years. Well, over, okay, they've been with us for 22 years. General Tire, looking for something for that F-250. What about that Chevrolet you got out there in the front lawn uh, that needs some new tires? Be sure you're rolling on General Tires. Go to GeneralTire.com. GeneralTire.com. It's hot out there. Make sure you're rolling on General Tires as you take yourself across the country. Tyler Reddick back in the Freak Nation. Winner Tyler Reddick here in the Freak Nation. Tyler, I don't know if you can tell by my tan, but I was on the beach for a freaking week, my friend. And Crash came out to me on the beach and said, well, it's it's a Sunday. Well, Tyler and uh, – Tyler and Dylan, they're not doing so well in the race. I went, oh, crap. And then an hour and a half later, I say, Crash, guess who won? Tyler Reddick. And she. I did not believe you. No. Because when we came back out, it was, I don't know, somewhat after lunch. You were 19th. And it must have been after a pit cycle. But of course, I'm not paying attention as much. I got my daughter to pay attention to, you know, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll catch up on the race later. So I'm like, eh, I don't think they're doing very well. So whatever, let's just continue. So when he said that, I'm like, you are so lying to me. I mean, there's no way. And I'm like, holy cow, we had a party on the beach for you. Let's just put it that way. Awesome. Yeah, you know, uh, it can be the, the way the stages work on the road course. It can be a little bit deceiving if you tune in at the wrong time. And yeah, it was probably, I would guess, at the end of stage one. I think we were that far back. I think we were about 19th at the end of stage one, I'm guessing. Yeah, so with those cycles, you know, drivers would stay out and, and get some track position, and and we we hit pit road, uh, you know, before before pit road closed, so that we could leapfrog back to the front at the uh, you know resumption of of the race after you know the stage breaks. Awesome. Well, that being said, it's it's out there that Randall, your crew chief, Randall Burnett, has said he's got to be your cheerleader at times to keep your spirits up when you when you don't when you're not doing well in the car. Was he was he cheerleading with you? throughout this race at road America. He had to do a little bit in the beginning because uh, we, we felt like we were a little bit off um, in, in certain areas of the track where I, I needed to be as good as, you know, as Kyle Larson, Chase Briscoe and Chase Elliott were sorry about that noise. Hope it's not too bad. Um, <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> but yeah, so we did, we worked on, a, well, we didn't really work on the car. The car was perfect all day. Honestly, I just had to move some things around some marks figured out some things on the track that, you know, the guys in front of me were using that I wasn't. And next thing you know, we kind of closed the gap and just through, you know, one spot at a time that, you know, I got around Kyle, I think in stage two, and then ultimately in stage three, you know, uh, could stay with chase until we hit pit road then came off pit road right behind him and just kept pressing the issue. And, and fortunately, fortunately uh, created a, a mistake. I saw your, I saw your cat just now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's the, it's the everyone's celebrating you right now. The, oh, here here we go. Here see, we go. My cat used to do the same thing to me. Um, I think it was like a year or two ago. I was doing a Zoom, and she mm-hmm. just walked like right in front of the screen like this for my hand <laughs> and just blocked the whole image. 
And everyone's like, uh, Tyler's cat just completely photo bombed <laughs> the interview. So, and they have no shame with their butts either. It's no. like cat oh, no, no, she put her butt right in front of the camera, like, hey, look at this. It's like no one wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and here goes the conversation. Who were we talking with, Statman? I think it was Kyle Larson. He's a dog guy, and Statman's on team dog. Kenny and I are on team cat. Clearly, mm -hmm. Tyler, you're team cat, right? Uh, I can't believe Kyle. I, I'm a little surprised Kyle said he was team dog because I know he's had a few cats throughout his life. So he might be trying to sweep that one under the rug. Mm. <laughs> it might have been. It might have been sweet. Oh, I think it oh. might have been Brad Sweet. Yeah, yeah it might have been Brad Sweet who was team dog and Statman. Statman, he just Statman, you just don't like cats. What's the problem, brother? I I'll tell all three of you. Cats are a waste of time. I can't. <laughs> I can't deal with anything, anybody, anything that needs me to feed it and then ignores me. I, <laughs> no, I, that's not. You got to be a little nicer to your cat, Sat Man, because thank you. Cats, because <laughs> I don't have that problem. I'm, I'm, I'm always having to, to ask for a little bit of space. Like, okay, yeah, like I'm really glad that you're excited to see me, but you've been like on top of me for about an hour. Like, can I like catch a breath? <laughs> I don't have the problem with the cats that I have. They, it's actually the opposite. They're more like attached. I feel like they're worse than dogs. They, they're like dogs. Actually, when I leave the house, they'll just start howling for like an hour on end. It's ridiculous. <laughs> no, that's not ridiculous. It's adorable. Okay. So then why aren't you like AJ Almendinger bringing your cats to the track? I mean, with how upset they get, I mean, I'm not kidding you. It, it could they're worse. They're worse than Bo. I think they'll, it, it'll be six in the morning and they're like sad and they want a little attention. It's like, we, we, we fell asleep at like midnight. I was out there on the couch laying with you and you can't go six hours without losing your mind. So come to the door and start howling and scratching at the door. I see no Bo's awake and we're awake. And it's like, all right, well, we got to start our day. Now the cats are, uh, are very, uh, very attached. Yep, so that's man, uh, you, you got, you got a cat there that, You've dealt with a few cats, I guess, that, that just don't like people. <laughs> you got to be different, Statman. You got to yeah. caress them. The dog, I you know, I love a dog. A dog, you can pet him. But when a dog wants to go uh, lay down, leave me alone. And, uh, you know, and uh, I, I'm, I'm just a dog guy. I'm not going to be ashamed of that. And uh, I've worked with these cat people for uh, 22 years, going up, starting at 23rd year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I still don't like cats. <laughs> 20, 23 years into the experiment, I still don't like cats. I just, I just realized that I never connected my AirPods to my laptop. So the whole time I've been listening to this audio, I'm like, it sounds like it's not coming from these. And as it turns out, yeah, I never reconnected them to my laptop between phone interviews and Zoom. So... <laughs> Thank goodness we're loud, I guess. Are we gonna yeah, yeah, I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad I don't sound too bad. So I'm like, this is just weird. Like it sounds like the audio is coming. I know the spatial audio stuff's pretty technology's pretty cool, but it seems so real. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just don't up. let that happen in the race car. That would be bad. Mm. Well, we don't we don't have Bluetooth in the race car yet, anyways. So um I have no problems there. You gotta plug it in manually still. So it's hard to screw that up. Well, are, you guys, are you guys going to rely on me to put this thing back on the rails? I'm the guy that usually drives it off the rails. Damn. <laughs> no, it's fun. Hey, it wasn't any of our fault. Any of these mm -hmm. faces on the screen right now wasn't our fault. It was a cat tail. Yeah. It was Omar the cat who screwed up this well, interview. Tyler, yeah, well, I'm sorry. I Maybe I shouldn't have sent out samples to everybody before I did the call. You know, maybe that's why we got a little off track. <laughs> 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 Smart man. Well done. <laughs> Smart man. Jeez. Now that's a sponsor plug if I've ever heard it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I can take us back on the rails. Tyler Reddick, you finally got your first win. I've gone over the edge all year. We have something called Beat the Freaks where I have to guess who's going to do well in a NASCAR race. I was in your camp for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And weeks. The one week I get out of your camp, you win. <laughs> I mean, it, you're just it, a cat person. There you go. It's hey. all that guy that's, that's I can blame it on. But you all the time on dirt, big tracks, mm -hmm. cookie cutter tracks everywhere. 
you picked the longest track in America to go win. How did that happen? Well, I put a lot of work into the road courses and too, you know, I just, I just wanted to put everyone through agonizing pain that was watching because we're going five laps to go. Well, we got like 15 more minutes to go more alive. <laughs> everyone that I talked to that, that uh, watched the race were like, those were the longest 17 laps of my life. I'm like, well, yeah, it's a four mile road course. It's about two and a half minutes to get around there. So it, it is going to take forever. So it was agonizing for everybody, including, including myself. That That's for sure. And you Whoa. had one of the what? toughest guys on a road course chasing you, and you yeah. walked away from him. You looked in the rearview mirror and said, I'm out of here. Did you worry about Chase Elliott being in the mirror there? Um, honestly, not too not too bad. Um, there was a period in time where I, was, I, I felt like I needed to take care of my brakes. And as it turned out, I didn't need to. As soon as I started pressing along like I was early in the race, we got back away. But when we were, run when we were running behind him in the beginning of the race, you know, he was obviously leading by a number of seconds. But it just kind of seemed like he was a little bit off here, a little bit off there. And that was surprising because, you know, he's, you know, always checked out in a lot of these road course races. He's won so many of them. But just as the race progressed and we, you know, went from being fourth to third to then second, then on his back bumper, I could kind of see where he was making – you know, just missing a little bit here, missing a little bit there. So I, I felt like, all right, if I can press the issue, kind of, you know, bait him into dr driving into turn five really hard, making him think about a dive it in there, hmm. maybe a window would open up. And and thankfully that's what happened. We both missed turn five. He just missed it a little bit worse than I did. And I was able to have the position into six. Oh, I was going to ask you about that. So you were watching those specific points where you could take advantage of him. Well, I think all the breaking zones you have at Road America, there's a lot of opportunities. You just got to know with each corner what the right strategy is. You know, um, with turn five, it's like turn one um, all the way over to turn three. You know, if you get the inside line in the first corner, you're going to have the inside line for the next one. And turn one, uh, turn one to turn three is that way. Turn, turn five to turn six is that way. Um, and it actually just worked out perfectly because I, I made the pass in five and six. Um Left him a little bit too much room in seven because we had a little bit of contact. Didn't want to shut the door. And I thought I hurt myself by be because of that. And um, thankfully, I made the right choice. Instead of trying to block into eight, just let him have the inside line because the carousel was the next corner. And it was a right-hand corner that was pretty much dominated right around the, the white line and the grass. So um, thankfully, just it all played out really good there. I'm a full believer of momentum because I, th I know there's a lot of people out there that don't believe that. They say every race weekend comes in and out on its own. But, man, look what Kyle Larson did with momentum last year. I'm a full believer you guys could do the exact same. I mean, that's the hope. <laughs> what did you have, Statman? Did you have some? Well, yeah, kind of the same thing. But you win and uh, you, you crossed over that hurdle that kept you from winning, like on, on the dirt at Bristol and several other places. You win now and – does that what does that do for you, for the team, for the guys that are over the wall? What does that do for them to say, all right, we got that off our back. Now let's go dock out about four or five more. Yeah, no, it, it certainly it validates everything that we've been all the work that we've been putting in, you know, that we've been going in the right direction, we've been making the right gains. Just it it, you know, it's reassuring to 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 know that we've not been as far away as as it seems. So for us it's a huge Huge motivational booster. You know, it's really exciting for, for some of us on the team. It was our first win, including myself, my crew chief. So, you know, it just it's a nice sense of nice confidence booster validation that, uh, you know, we be we belong here and we act, let's, let's go do it again. Did it make that next meeting with Richard Childress, your team owner? Did it make that next meeting with him saying, I told you, what are you worried about? <laughs> he's always been a believer, man. Um, he's believed in me since before day one, honestly. He wanted me to come over to RCR when I was running a junior motorsports, believed that I would be a champion for him in the Xfinity Series. And then we went out and did that. And he was like, all right, well, I guess we better throw you in a cup car now. And he <laughs> believes he's believed in me since day one that, that we could go out and win cup races with, with this team. And um, it, it's just really nice to, to, to achieve that, not just for him, but for everybody at RCR that, that believes that as well. What did you think when he told you race morning at Road America? What did you think when he said, I know you're going to win this race? 
I mean, he's always really confident in me. Um, <laughs> so, you know, he's told me that a few times this year. Oh know? yeah. <laughs> and he's and and the tough thing about it is the days that we've had that he's told me that we've we've been up front, we've been leading, we've been having things go right, and then bam, they go wrong. So you know, it, it it's been tough on all of us, but you know, he's he's a believer in what our team has done, what I've continued to work on, the gains we've been making, and yeah, uh, it's always nice to have the boss when your boss has your back. All right, I know you got to get the hell out of here, man. But uh, whether it's Kevin Harvick with Bush Beer or even Dale Jr. back in the day with Budweiser, we know how they celebrated. But do you celebrate with a little bit of Delta Eight or a little? What do you? How do you celebrate with your sponsor, man? What do you do? Or uh, is this in spirit? In spirit, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> right. Being boxed in, you know. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Hey, things to change. Didn't you bring a beer into the post race press conference or something? Yeah, I, I I had a champagne bottle. I think it came from Victory Lane. It wasn't gone yet. I drank the other two, so I wanted I wanted to finish that one off. Then someone <laughs> brought me a spotted cow. Then someone handed me some some Captain and Coke, which was nice. I mean, I had I had every every corner I come around, someone was handing me something else. So. You know that was that was very nice for everybody. Oh, I, well done. Little Delta Eight gummies. I, I, listen, I, I Kenny, know I don't. I know you're asking for freebies. I, I, I know, know what you're hey, doing. <laughs> Tyler knows where I live. Damn it. Yeah, and I, I know some people. Yeah, I don't get drug tested every freaking week. I can certainly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay, uh, buddy. We are happy for you. Um, Crasher can finally and stack can finally. Pick somebody else or maybe they'll continue no, to pick Tyler Reddick. I'm riding the train, man. Freaks. We're riding the train. <laughs> awesome. Tyler Reddick here in the Freak Nation. And you're right, Stat, you, Crasher, you guys were riding that Tyler Reddick freaking train for a long freaking time. Statman started last year. I started this year with the new car. But, yeah, Stat was on it from last, mid last year, I think. You said, this guy's going to do it. Hmm. Yeah, and it got embarrassing when he always, especially at Bristol. I mean, at Bristol, it was like he comes out of the last turn and gets spun out. I know. And, you know, I mean, that that hurt, had hurt him. And every camera in NASCAR was aimed at him when the, <laughs> at the end of the race. He couldn't get mad. But I think I, I'd be... I wouldn't want to be the fly on the wall because I'd get punched through the wall. <laughs> You'd get swatted? <laughs> You'd fly swatted? Just punched through it. Freak Nation, coming up this hour, a motocross rider who's done something, or actually last weekend did something not a whole lot of 250 riders have done throughout the year, and that's knock off the Lawrence brothers. Yeah. Joe Shimoda coming up. But first, here's your stat man scat. <laughs> Lots happened in the last couple of weeks. A lot of things have been said, a lot of ugly things in Formula One. Things that lead you to pour a cup of angry when you wake up in the morning. But cups of angry make you think small. For example, angry attitudes make you denigrate people with seven championships when you only have three. Nelson P.K.'s problem wasn't that he used the N-word to talk about Lewis Hamilton. P.K.'s problem was that he called Hamilton little and his daughter agreed because she sleeps with the man who stole an eighth championship from Hamilton last December. The theft was so ugly, the man who f tried to fence that title lost his job trying to defend it. Worse, PK and his daughter's boyfriend, Max Verstappen, made their first bones in Formula One when it was run by a man who thinks Vladimir Putin is a good guy. That same Vladimir Putin who smiles throwing rockets and bullets at old men and women and children. Bernie Ecclestone says he'd gladly take a bullet for Putin as long as it doesn't hurt. They're all small, small enough to not talk about anymore. You can't drink angry without becoming small. Money and fame make you big in today's world, but cups of angry and bad attitude make you small. And small won't let you see over a stack of seven championships to admire anything. Peace. Statman put a scat out several weeks ago when porpoising became an issue in Formula One, and it's raised its head again. First of all, Statman, if you can share with the Freak Nation what porpoising is to those novice motorsports or automotive fans, people who own a freaking car going, what, my car porpoises? No, not necessarily. 
But there's a problem with porpoising in Formula One, <laughs> and they've taken action again with porpoising. Well, yeah, they had. There was a problem with the car, and they, uh, the, you couldn't pass easily. When you got close to the car, there was so much turbulence that it was not easy to pass. You'd lose control of your front end. They changed that, and the uh, the, the non what's the word the unintended consequence mm -hmm. was that the as you went fast, uh, the easiest thing to do is to lower the car if the course if the track was smooth enough. But as the the air went over the car the car would hit the ground. And when it hit the ground and it would bounce up, then the air would get under it and it would suck it back to the ground and you end up bouncing. Uh, and that was what uh, they were having problems. And a couple of the drivers, especially at Mercedes, were getting out of the car with back problems. And uh, so the FIA said, no, we can't have that. And then Red Bull answered and says, yeah, we can. If they can't figure it out, that's their problem. <laughs> we we kind of got ours figured out, and but there are teams that uh, and even Red Bull is having problems once in a while, uh, but uh, Mercedes has been working on it and getting the problems kind of sorted out. What they did was change the under the uh, undercarriage of the car, the bottom of the car on the outside, add some stable stabilizers on the side of the car, and widen it a little bit and did some aero work to the floor of the car and that sort of mitigated some of the porpoising problem uh, and therefore the car is getting faster. Uh, Lewis uh, was leading at uh, Silverstone, one of his favorite tracks. He was leading uh, last weekend and uh, finished on the podium for the second straight week. So uh, yeah, and curiously enough, Verstappen was whining, my car doesn't work and I can't and they're beating me and I don't know what to do. Wow, that's a really it's good Verstappen good. impression. I, I, I mm -hmm. I, last December changed the world. So, uh, <laughs> he, uh, you know, they're figuring it out. And a lot of the teams, these are some of the smartest engineers and they have uh, supercomputers to work this stuff out. So anybody who doesn't figure it out in Formula One uh, shouldn't be there because it, you know, it's a problem, but they're sorting it out. Freak Nation, there is a rider out there that finally puts the Lawrence brothers on the sidelines. Okay, well, he got himself an overall win. Joe Shimoto in the 250 class for the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross at Redbud last weekend. He'll be joining us next, right here. Speed Freaks Pits and the Lucas Oil Studios. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. IndyCar, WWT Raceway, Saturday, August 20th, the Bomberito Automotive Group 500. Icons, legends, and rising stars. Drama at 200 miles per hour. It's not a reality show, it's real life, real fast. The iconic teams, McLaren, Andretti, Foyt, Rahal, Penske, Ganassi. Legendary drivers, Johnson, Canaan, Castro Nevis, New Garden, IndyCar. Only at WWT Raceway. General Tire delivers. Lucas Oil, it works. I run Lucas Oil. It doesn't matter if you're on the water, driving to work, or competing in a sold out stadium. Lucas Oil products will help you get the most out of your vehicle. Monster Jam has run Lucas Oil in and on our trucks for over 10 years. We wouldn't run anything else. Lucas Oil, the official oil of Monster Jam. 
Hey, Freak Nation, did you hear? With the addition of MAV-TV Plus to the MAV-TV Motorsports Network, they've got their full live event broadcast schedule, a total of 226 live race broadcasts featuring the Arca Menard Series, the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, Pro Pulling League, American Sprint Car Series, Pro Motocross, and the Lucas Oil Chili Bowl Nationals. MAV-TV, the only television network dedicated to motorsports. Go to MAVTV.com to get your motorsports fix 24-7, 365. Dear Lucas Oil, I've used your heavy-duty oil stabilizer in my truck for years. It now has over a half million miles. It's not a diesel. It's never been rebuilt. Your oil stabilizer does exactly what it says it'll do. It has extended the life of my engine. Just want to say thanks. Sincerely, Josh H. Lucas Heavy-Duty Oil Stabilizer. It works. Time is more valuable today. There's less time to keep our vehicles looking their best. That's where Lucas Oil Slick Mist Speed Wax steps up. It's great for paint, chrome, glass, and vinyl. Lucas Oil Slick Mist simply mists on and then wipes off, leaving a new car shine every time. It's quick and easy and works on wet or dry surfaces. For a complete detail, there's also Slick Mist Interior or Slick Mist Tire and Trim Shine. Lucas Oil. It works. You are listening to Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio Redefined. Back with the Freaks, 22 years, Lucas Oil Studio, Statman, Crash Gladys, Kenny Sargent. This is the first time for this guy to join us here in the Freak Nation. Joe Shimoda, uh, your 250 winner from last weekend, July 4th weekend, joining us here in the Freak Nation. First question for you, uh, I know Hunter talked about you getting a tattoo, a USA tattoo on your belly. Did you end up getting that <laughs> USA tattoo on your belly? Um, not, a, not a tattoo, I don't know if I want to do that tattoo on my on my belly like that, but uh, <laughs> it's fun doing it. <laughs> it's it's. I want to say it's a long time coming with this win, but you're you're still somewhat still wet behind the ears with Supercross and Motocross, but really uh, putting the hunter the the Lawrence brothers uh, at rest for at least one weekend was a big damn deal. Uh, yet at the same time, do you always feel that th- those are the riders that you have to chase, race in and race out, and not concern yourself with other riders? Um, I mean, I think everybody's competitive. The guys line up next to me, and but yeah, those two guys are definitely at the top level. They're always there every weekend to fight for the win. So yeah, my goal is to. Try to be as uh, close as possible to them. Uh, back in the past, great. If not, keep chasing and and uh, go and beat them. So, um, yeah, just chasing right now. Yeah, with Hunter and Jet, it's tough to get away from their personalities, but their riding can certainly back up their personalities. I would imagine a guy like yourself, it's refreshing to have personalities like Jet and Hunter in Supercross and Motocross. Well, it's not really like fake personality too, you know, like uh, we all just naturally having fun and if people like it, great. Like, and I think that's that's uh, the fun part of this sport. Uh, I mean, we, we race hard at each other, but at the same time, like you don't need to be mean or disrespectful uh, off the track, so. I remember at Paula, I think, I think it was the first round, you said you were excited about getting a P3 in that round, but you said still in your post, so much to work on. What have you been working on through the season, and how good did it feel to have it finally capitalized upon with an overall win last weekend? Definitely to start. Uh, I am a bad starter. I, I can say that. Um, it's not like I can't do it. It's just super inconsistent, and that would help me a lot. And then, yeah, I mean, to grab more speed, those little tents are really important as well. Just uh, putting all the pieces together is what I'm working on right now. Um, and yeah, I hope I can do it soon. But that is what helped you then with Redbud, right? Because your starts were a little bit better. So whatever you're doing, it's working. Yeah, I mean, like I said, yeah. Um, there's still so much thing to learn and all I can do is just try my best uh, if it works great if not just keep working 
Do you have other guys, whether it's veteran riders who are no longer riding, but but out there watching you or current riders? Do you have them giving you some input on some other things that maybe you could improve? Like I see my like favorite rider to watch. Yeah, maybe. Um, I I like uh, I like Justin Barcia. Just uh, just because his riding style is really aggressive and kind of really opposite of my style. Huh. So I I don't know. I just like his style. There was Joe Shimoda uh, finished. One uh, last weekend in Lucas Oil Motocross, there was some praises last year uh, by Ricky Carmichael about you. Uh, and one of the things that he said was your determination. And you kind of said that just now. Uh, do, you, do you appreciate what somebody, the, the class of Ricky Carmichael, Hall of Fame writer, some consider him the greatest of all time, uh, do you hear that? Does that resonate with you? And what do you take that on the track with you? Uh, for sure. Like Ricky Carmichael is obviously like legends. Um, it's uh, it's almost well. It's like who you want to be, and yeah, to have the guys comment uh, good things about me is really like it's almost kind of like a reward. Like um, like a uh, I don't know. It's so hard to say for me. To, like, it's hard for me to explain it. But mm -hmm. um, you kind of get excited when they talk about it. You mentioned working on your starts. That just resonated with me when you said that. How do you practice getting a start to a like a foot and a half window against thirty five other guys all going for that same foot and a half? How do you practice a start for Supercross? Um, yeah, like like you say, like there's 35 rider on the gate that wants to take take over, you know. And yeah, my problem is I get too nervous on the gate. I'm my legs are like shaking and stuff. So I mean that comes from like being in good in time qualifier will give you confidence and lining up to the gate knowing you're gonna do good instead of knowing okay uh considering your unsure things so i mean the race day you have to build the day from the qualifier i believe mm. and yeah if not then just i feel like you need to have more clear vision of what you what you were you're going to do on the race so instead of focusing on the other, you're focusing on yourself. So that, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but that sounds like what, what you've been saying all along, instead of physically preparing to do something on the track, whether it's a start or more speed, it sounds like what you're saying is that I've got to get inside my head and prepare myself to do well, and if I do that, I'm going to be successful. Do I have that right? Yeah, you're right. I'm, um, everybody's different. Some guys meet, maybe need a technique. Some might, some guys maybe need a a speed. But my uh, personal goal right now is to focus on myself. Um, I mean, for some guys it comes comes natural, but but not me, you know. I have to work on it, and and then I mean, it's getting better and better each race in each year. But yeah, I mean, these couple of rounds I've been doing better and better. So I hope um, I can keep doing. All right, Joe Shimoda, Redbud winner, joining us here in the Freak Nation. I want you to put this on repeat in your head. I am Joe Shimoda. I'm a badass. I'm a Red Bud winner, and I'm going to kick the crap out of every other motocross racer from start to finish for the rest of this Lucas Oil motocross season. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
You got this. I mean, you do have so much talent. So yeah, now it just needs to be harnessed. And we're not saying be disrespectful, but we are saying kind of think more like Barsha or be a little bit more of a badass because you got it. You got the talent in your body. Now you just need to convince your mind of that because you're going places, man. You are. Thank you. Yeah. Just need to be a little meaner. (laughs) Be mean. Be mean. Be a little meaner. (laughs) Get the elbows out a little bit. Make make room for me. I'm coming through. Yeah, there you go. All right, so Joe Shimoda joining us here in the Freak Nation, and it's not lost on on us, Joe, that after over the 65 plus year history of professional motocross, there's been one Japanese rider that's actually had a world class title, and it's always been a surprise to me with the manufacturers coming from Japan and, and being so. Uh, uh, such a part of Supercross and Motocross. How come there hasn't been more successful championship riders from Japan? You're a young man who's got a lot of talent. Where have the Joe Shimodas been in the past? Any idea? I'm sorry, I didn't really get the question. No, where? Why haven't there been more Japanese successful Japanese riders over the years? Uh. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I can't control them. So what? Um, I don't know. Nope. Uh, but I have a goal. Like, I want to be. Uh, well, yeah, I, I've been telling this, this to people. Like, because I'm, I'm Japanese, uh, motocross industry might be not big there. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean I'm not competitive. So if I can be one of the guys who's. Who can show that, you know, like you can really do it if you work hard for it. And then show that to, uh, I want to show that to people in Japan. And I hope one day um, there's more, a lot more people from Japan um, could come race here. It'll be more fun, I think. Yes. Oh, this is going to be fun to watch. This is going to be fun to watch through the years. All right. Well, let's leave it with this. We like to ask this question. We we give three names out there when it comes to – we like to – well, I know Ricky Carmichael, Jeremy McGrath, or James Stewart. Of those three writers, whose style did you do you enjoy more watching when you go back and look at old video of those three writers? I'm, I'm more uh, – I watch – he was so many times because uh, when I watched the videos, he was still racing. And yeah, probably him. Uh, just love his riding style, love his style, I mean, just in general. And it's really entertaining to watch, and it's obviously fast. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, man, you're you're on to something here. Uh, you're you're doing some things, and it's awesome that you're making the 250 class competitive. I know you're sitting in the three spot at this point, buddy. Good luck to you for the rest of the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross season, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, you, Statman, you were talking about this earlier, how we finally had a Supercross motocross rider on that's not coming from a freaking injury. <laughs> for a change, yeah. right? Not limping or, or in a sling or something. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd, when I... I thought about it when you mentioned about uh, Japanese riders, a lot of them in road racing in Grand Prix racing and uh, uh, MotoGP and so mm-hmm. forth. He was born in Suzuka, the, one of the great racetracks in the world. And uh, I, I wondered if they concentrate more on uh, uh, pavement racing, MotoGP, uh, uh, I can't, su- not Supercross, but uh super bikes and so forth. And instead of going out on the dirt and I, you know, I wonder what good question. Yeah. What caused him to uh, consider dirt racing versus obviously he has the skill to ride a motorcycle Mm -hmm. and he could do whatever he wanted to do. And growing up in the shadow of Suzuka is uh, you know, it, it, that would have been the thing that would have attracted him to racing, but he didn't. He got into the dirt, and uh, dirt's probably better off because of it. I mean, yeah. There's yeah. been three steady manufacturers, and now there are four manufacturers. It's uh, Suzuki, Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha. Mm-hmm. You know where they're from. And it, it, 
it's like sports car racing back in the day or, or just racing. I mean, A.J. Foyt, the Unser family, these are American drivers winning in American made American built cars. I just maybe it's just me just trying to put the puzzle together yeah, but here. The difference is those were American drivers and American cars in an American series. Mm -hmm. Like Joe was just yeah. saying, yes, these are Japanese manufacturers, but they're racing in an American series, not in a Japanese series. So yeah. therefore the familiarity or at least the just just the identity at all together just wasn't there when he was growing up. Yeah, that, 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 pro that probably makes him even more unique in that uh, MotoGP and Superbikes, they race all over the world. And there is motocross and supercross elsewhere, but the biggest series is here in uh, America. So, um, you know, for some reason, he enjoyed the dirt and uh, got, you know, got some success early and probably stayed with it. And he loves speed. He kind of smiled about that. And yeah. anybody, anybody who uh, uh, likes James uh, likes speed. So uh, <laughs> if he's going to copy off of somebody, he better learn to be fast. <laughs> he can get his starts down. Speaking of James Stewart and speed, if, if Joe Shimoda can get his starts down with that need for speed, look out. Yeah. 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 And I, Frankly, with the six months that I lived in Japan, you had to get way the heck out of the city to find any property to ride on. Mm -hmm. and, and we've got that all over this country where you've got woods, you've got mountains. You can you can mm -hmm. just grab your bike and go. But, you know, it's not easy to do in, in uh, Japan. Yeah, on an island, there's not a lot of land that you, mm -hmm. you could go around in a circle on a racetrack, but just to go take off uh, against the the mountain or something right. a little more difficult in uh, Japan. You get to the top of the mountain in Japan is liable to be a volcano or something. All right. You know, you can, hey, I'm going out to the desert. What? No, no, you're not. No. <laughs> so it's awesome to be Joe Shimoda. Just crash your, you, the things you've read and seen on this guy, he's just, he's got some chops that. Well, he was fun to watch in Supercross too, mm -hmm. in the Supercross season. And it's transferring to motocross. I mean, yeah, the Lawrence brothers are pretty much dominating, but Nobody else is on his tail. So, yeah, he's doing things. He's doing things, and he's going to be fun to watch into the years in the future. Freak Nation, big second hour coming up. Justin Ashley, sitting number four in porn points, NHRA top fueler. He'll be here in the Freak Nation. Again, your stat man, Scat. More coming up. Speed Freaks Pits and the Lucas Oil Studios. from the Lucas Oil Studios. Driven by General Tire. It's Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio redefined with Kenny Sargent. We love to party. Crash Gladys. What are we doing for the bachelorette party? And Stepman. I am serious. Here's the Freaks. Freak Nation. Stat Man, Crash Gladys, Kenny Sargent, second hour, Speed Freaks, Lucas Oil Studios. Justin Ashley, number four in points, NHRA top fueler. He'll be here in the Freak Nation. We'll highlight our first hour interview with Tyler Reddick and some not much motorsports this hour. Are we going to talk cats? Uh, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll probably talk a little bit more cats here in the Freak Nation. Sorry, I'm sure Statman man. will find a way to bring up Beyonce once again here in the Freak Nation. <laughs> oh, I'll let that one just lay it on by. Statman, Lola Falana or Beyonce? Hmm. Oh, Beyonce, are you kidding? What about my girl? Oh, uh, 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 Green. Well, I can't think of her name. Come on. Oh, come on, Statman. Hmm? Girl in green. Oh, not in green. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm digging. I'm digging rabbit holes. Second hour. I should just stop it. So you just heard Statman. Lola Falano. She was just back in the '70s. Even this young dude knew that she was the bomb. Dot com. Even before there was a com. Statman. Oh, way before com. Crasher. Do you even know who Lola Falana is? Yeah, I'd have to look her up. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> so, yeah, but I have to look her up. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Yeah, there was one one night I was at a restaurant in Hollywood years ago, and Lola Fulana and uh, who was the woman who sang and, and was a Laker dance girl at one time? Oh, Paula Abdul. Yeah, yep. Paula Abdul and another woman who was hot in Hollywood, and they were all in one booth eating in the corner in the dark, and they all got up and left at the same time, <laughs> and, and the restaurant went quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Pam Greer is who I was thinking of, Stat Man. Oh, Pam Greer. Well, I don't know. Pam Greer, when Pam Greer was Pam Greer, that'd mm -hmm. be a toss up. You know, that'd be yep. an absolute toss up. Freak Nation, this is a motorsports show. And every now and then we do talk a little bit of motorsports. We talked about porpoising in Formula One last, last hour. Question for you, Stat Man. Do we know what the budget is set for formula one teams what the do we, an idea we roughly a budget set i think it i think they lowered it to like 125 million something like that yeah that's uh, wow yeah that is a lot less than what they used to spend in the 150 yeah i mean ferrari and mercedes uh, and Red Bull used to spend over 200 250 and other teams that were at the back of the line used to spend as little as 50 or 60 Jeez. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and that's why they wanted to kind of bring it more in line um, so that the, the competitive balance could be a little better. I mean, and it's sort of happening mm -hmm. with Devin Magnuson and the Haas car is getting in the in the top 10 and qualifying. Uh, and, you know, some, some people are starting to get faster, move out of the back of the line, and some of the people – who were at the front of the line at one time, like McLaren, mm -hmm. uh, fell way back. But they're that they're getting their problems sorted out. But still, Red Bull and Mercedes and Ferrari are still. Well, uh, quickly uh, before we get into crash class pit news and notes, I brought that up. That news was it was earlier this week where the FIA and Formula One came to an agreement to to push up their their bottom line to, to involve inflation from 3% to 3.1%. And I couldn't find a hard wow. figure what the budget is for formula. There, there's a lot of numbers that are thrown around out there, but evidently for 2023, thanks to inflation, their budget's going to increase by 3%. <laughs> but, but that is a problem. I, I read a story that uh, you didn't realize that uh, it's costing more to ship stuff around the world on airplanes and uh, just to drive down the road. Uh, it's costing more around the world to get diesel fuel and so forth. So things are costing more mm -hmm. uh, to, to move the team from place to place and let them stay in a hotel. All that's costing more. So if you sat in a chair in uh, Italy, in Rome or in Paris, and said that the, it's going to be ten dollars, and then the next thing you know, it's uh, cost twelve dollars to get stuff done. Then you got to make some changes. <laughs> you sat in a chair. <laughs> oh, after twenty-two years, we never run out of crap to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh Just boy! Sat in a chair for ten dollars. Justin Ashley, NHRA Top Fuel Badass, will be joining us coming up in moments. But first, we're going to resume with some of our affiliates, get in some Crash Gladys at news and notes. Lucas Oil Studios. Speed Freaks. We promise to suck less. Speed Freaks. Motorsports Radio. Redefined. The Freaks. Bringing in more affiliates for a Speed Freaks Sunday night. Thank you guys for hanging out. Stats here, Crashers here, most truly Kenny Sargent. We're here. A lot of folks on the road this weekend. A lot of folks on the road this summer. Be sure you're rolling on General Tires, Freak Nation. That's General Tires. GeneralTire.com. Check out the website for the tire for your ride. What are you driving? Find out what you need on it. Go to GeneralTire.com. Crasher. So, Max Verstappen is still leading the Formula One points, but his lead was slightly reduced after Charles Leclerc took the win at the Austrian Grand Prix earlier today. And speaking of F1, IndyCar driver Colton Herta will take his first official seat in a McLaren machine tomorrow and Tuesday in Portimao. I'm not sure about you all, I'm just not ready for Colton to leave the IndyCar series just yet. 
but obviously props to him whenever he eventually does go. Now, NASCAR gave us an excellent weekend, both at Mid-Ohio and down south in Atlanta. First, the trucks in Mid-Ohio, Parker Kligerman. Yeah, that TV guy. He held off Zane Smith on the inaugural road course race to win by just 0.119 seconds. The Xfinity Series then delivered a finish just as exciting when Georgia native Austin Hill beat Josh Berry to the stripe by only 0.111 seconds. And how about those hometown drivers all weekend? On Sunday, it was Dawsonville's Chase Elliott, his turn. Yep, the siren rang. Chase took home the checkers in a thrilling race with these new cup cars. It was arguably, in my opinion, the best cup race yet of the year. Peaches in victory lane for everyone. And something we need to keep our eye on, Ross Chastain. He's pretty much driving himself away from more and more friendships on the track. Just stay tuned to that. The SRX series was at the Nashville Fairgrounds, and it was a new-ish face in victory lane. Bobby Labonte taking the win over a hard-charging Marco Andretti. Jet Lawrence was back on top in the 250 Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Series, while Eli Tomac commanded his third win in a row on the four, in the 450s on the Sand and Southwick. Monza played host to the six hours race with the Le Mans hypercars. Andre Negrau, Matthew Volksberry, and Nicolas Lapierre with the win and still atop their point standings. For more information all weekend on racing, check out racer.com and, of course, speedsport.com. Speed Freaks, Motorsports Radio, redefined. Hey, Freak Nation, whether you're looking for a tire that balances high-performance responsiveness and traction in wet and light snow conditions, excellent handling and traction in off-road situations, or a summer performance tire designed with the driving enthusiast in mind, General Tire has you covered. From the G-Max RS to the Grabber ATX, no matter what you drive, General Tire will get you where you're going. Learn more at GeneralTire.com. General Tire, supporting the Freak Nation for two decades. IndyCar, WWT Raceway, Saturday, August 20th. The Bomberito Automotive Group 